When we all heard the big news that Brad Keselowski would be owning his own team starting in 2022, we were all shocked. I remember being on a boat ride when the news dropped, and I was shocked just like I think you were. After Brad Keselowski's kind of a disappointing one-win season and a round of eight playoff exit in 2021, I think some of us could see that change was needed going into the new next-gen era. And with Ryan Newman's retirement at the end of 2021, it gave Brad a great opportunity to try something new and have his start in the ownership side of NASCAR. And let's just say it was more than a disappointment. The newly named RFK Racing had promised going into the season, with some even predicting that both cars would make the playoffs. So what went wrong? The two drivers for RFK would be Brad Keselowski taking over the sixth car and bringing a new look to the car with his brand new font being really different from the old one that has been used since 2001. The other driver was Chris Buescher, who was returning for his third season with the team. Now, in the actual races in 2022, we all thought Brad would contend for wins and ultimately be a round of 12 to a round of 8 exit, but the exact opposite happened. Brad was pretty much only seen in rain delay interviews and when he was doing 180s on the track. He had three DNFs coming at Darlington, Charlotte, and the Daytona Summer Race. Granted, Charlotte and Daytona were just him getting caught up in everyone else's messes, but that doesn't tell the whole story. I made a video earlier this year about all of Brad's crashes from 2022, and the crash counter totals a whopping 19 crashes. He did have a stretch from the Coke 600 to Atlanta in July with zero crashes or spins, but still, 19 is a lot of crashes from a Cup Series champion, who isn't really past his prime. Actually, he's supposed to be having the best seasons of his career based off of his age. Brad ended up finishing the season with a 24th place points finish, 0 wins, 1 top 5, 6 top 10s, a pole, 3 DNFs, 224 laps led, an average finish of 19.1, and a best finish of 4th at the Bristol Dirt Race of all races. His biggest highlights, I would say from the season, was his dual win, but after that, nothing stood out. Now, his teammate Chris Buescher, on the other hand, had a much better season than his standards, with his highlight being a win at the Bristol Night Race, a race where Keselowski won a stage. Chris Busch's 2022 season will be remembered not for his win, though. It will be remembered for his wild flip in the Coke 600 after his suspension broke while spinning through the grass and his tire went under the car, causing him to flip four times and ultimately end up on his roof. Busch would have a much better season than Brad with a 21st place points finish, nearly doubling all of Brad's other stats, with one win, three top fives, ten top tens, an average finish of 17.8, six DNFs, though, one pole and 194 laps led. Busher also won his duel in Daytona, leading RFK to a sl- sweep in the duels. There were two downsides to Busher's season, and those were missing the gateway race due to COVID, and that race, Zane Smith filled in for him, and he ended up getting an impressive P17. The other downside was his 60 NFs, doubling his boss's count. He failed to finish Fontana, where he blew a tire in turn one, which ended his day pretty quick. Talladega, where he was involved in the first big crash along with Chase Briscoe and Daniel Hamrick. Charlotte in the Coke 600 for his flip, Atlanta in the fall where he was involved in a big wreck, Summer Daytona race where he had a chance to win when the rain came and wrecked half the field, including the 17 car. Lastly, he DNF'd at Texas in the fall because of a tire going down. Now, for 2023, hope was high for the team and they were hoping to get Brad a win to put the 17 car back in victory lane, and oh, they did. It all started in the Daytona 500 where both cars were strong and only a few races into the season, you could see it. this was going to go good. Only 25 races in the season and Brad has doubled all of his stats and more. In 25 starts, Brad is still winless, but he managed to finish runner-up at the first Atlanta race. He's finished inside the top five in five races so far and he's gotten 10 top 10s. He's still without a pole and his average finish has increased by almost five positions. He does already have two DNFs, one in the Daytona 500 where he got taken out on the final lap, and another one at Coda where he had a drive shaft issue. He also boasts 253 laps led and a guaranteed spot in the playoffs where he is currently the highest ranked winless driver. Chris Busch, on the other hand, is in the midst of his breakout season, his best season yet by a long shot, doing what Kevin Harvick did in 2022 by going back-to-back winning both Michigan and Richmond. Those wins have been his highlights, but he also had a way better statistical season. He's already beaten his number of top fives with five already, the same number as Brad, and two more than his 2022 season. He also has 11 top tens, which is one more than Brad this year, and one more 
than his, the entirety of last year. He's also increased his average finish to a 12.6. That's two positions higher than Brad for this year and five full spots better than his own average finish for 2022. Other notable stats and his current points position of 7th, a whopping 14 spots higher than 2022 and 229 laps led. So comparing the stats, they've nearly doubled. A very impressive feat for a team that was very so much falling just a year ago. And now my prediction for the rest of this year and this team's future. This year, I predict both cars make the round of eight, and Brad finally winning a race in the first two rounds, or at Daytona, which as of writing the script is later today, and Brad finishing fifth in points, just one spot ahead of Busher. I predict Busher is going to finish sixth after a very strong round of 12, but a disappointing round of eight, putting him in a Martinsville must win, which I just don't see him pulling off. For the future, I think Busher will only get one win next year, but Brad will break through with three wins, two in the regular season, and one in the playoffs. That prediction could change as the schedule gets revealed in a few weeks. I also think Brad will come short again of the Final Four, finishing sixth this year, and Busher getting eliminated in the round of 16 after a crash in one of the first two races, and a good race at Bristol, but just not good enough to advance him to the round of 12. Now, I want to know what you think about the rest of this season for RFK, and also for the future. This is a very different style of video for me, so I really hope you enjoyed. Like, subscribe, and comment if you want to see more content like this. And with that, I'm Good Game. See you in the next video. Also, as I was editing this, RFK for the, got their first 1-2 finish since 2014, with Busher getting his third win of the season at Daytona. So, I'm switching up my prediction. I think that Busher is actually going to make the round of four, and Brad's still going to finish sixth. Have a good day. See you in the next video.